good morning and welcome back to the NPTEL lecture series on classics in total synthesis part 1. And today what we will do we will move to a new class of natural products called triquinanes and after a brief introduction um, we will talk about total synthesis of at least one such triquinane and the next few lectures we will discuss more about various total synthesis of several triquinanes. So, what are these triquinanes? As you know we have seen many natural products having 5 membered as one of the key rings in the natural product and this 5 membered ring can be called as quinane. There are 5 carbon atoms so you can call that as quinane. If 2 5 membered rings are fused then you can call that as diquinane ok, 2 5 membered rings are fused so you can call them as diquinane. And if 3 5 membered rings are fused ok, if 3 5 membered rings are fused then there are 3 possibilities ok, 1 they are fused in a linear fashion ok, if they are fused in linear fashion then they are called linear triquinane ok. And on the diquinane if you add one more 5 membered ring in an angular fashion you can see this is the diquinane and you are adding one more 5 membered ring in an angular fashion then they are called angular triquinanes. Then the third ring, third 5 membered ring if you attach in such a way that if they, if they look like propylene so then that is the third category propylene type triquinanes. And when you talk about linear triquinanes then there are two types one cis anti cis. If you look at the relationship between these two rings they are cis. However, the relationship between the first and third ring that is anti. However, the relationship between the second and third ring is cis. So, that is why this is called cis anti cis. And then you also have cis sin cis system ok. So, when you look at many natural products belonging to linear triquinanes you will see both both skeleton present ok. Likewise you can see if you look at the linear triquinanes closely the core structure has 11 carbon atoms. This is a 5 membered ring, this is a 5 membered ring and there is one extra carbon atom which is also part of the 5 membered ring. So, there are 11 carbons which forms the core structure of any triquinane. So, the remaining 4 carbon atoms because they are sesquiterpenes. So, the remaining 4 carbon atoms are distributed across this 11 carbon atoms. The way they are distributed, way you have oxygen functionalities you can see several linear triquinanes. See if you look at the difference between hirsutine and capnelin ok. The hirsutine has exocyte double bond here whereas capnelin has here. And then hirsutine has a dimethyl group here whereas it has dimethyl group here. So, like this subtle changes will lead to different natural products. This is based on their way they cyclize during the biosynthesis and accordingly you know you see different natural products and quite a few are highly oxygenated as you can see in hirsutic acid, corealin there are 3 to 4 oxygen atoms present in such natural products. Coming to angular triquinanes, again angular triquinanes of uh, skeleton wise they are of 4 types. One for example if you look at this isocomane angular triquinanes there are 4 methyl groups in that 2 are angular methyl group ok, 2 are angular methyl groups. The remaining 2 they are attached to a tertiary carbon atom, they are attached to tertiary carbon atom. And in the case of sylphenine we have 1 angular methyl, methyl group, 1 methyl group which is attached to tertiary carbon atom and then you have 2 methyl groups they are gem dimethyl and they are quaternary ok. Same way pentalinine you can see 2 quaternary methyl groups 
and two methyl groups which are attached to tertiary carbon atom. Two methyl groups which are attached to tertiary carbon atoms. And sylphiperfolane type angular triquinanes, it has only one angular methyl group, the remaining three methyl groups are attached to tertiary carbon atoms. Okay. And there are many angular triquinanes, so here are some uh, alpha isochomene, beta isochomene, sylphenine and so on. Okay. We will try to cover total synthesis of some of them and as you know each group would have used different key reactions to make this natural product. So, over a period while talking about various total synthesis of triquinanes, you also will know or you also will get an idea how such molecules can be synthesized using different key reactions and different key strategies. Coming to the third one that is the propylene type triquinanes, the third ring okay, you can see first the basic diquinanes almost same, only the third one is different and some of them are oxygenate. Okay. So, for example, this one modifying epoxide and polycarol. So, these three are oxygenated, the basic one which is just modifying having only a double bond. Okay. Now, what we will do, we will talk about the total synthesis of uh, alpha and beta isochromines today. And the, these isochromines were isolated from isochroma righty. And a closer look at these molecules, you can see that there are three contiguous quaternary centers. Okay, one, two, three. There are three contiguous quaternary carbons. Okay. So, always construction of quaternary carbons is not easy. Okay. And particularly if you have to construct stereoselectively, it is uh, really a tough job. And in addition, you have one chiral center. The difference between alpha and beta isochromine is the position of the double bond. In the case of alpha isochromine, you have internal double bond, whereas in the case of beta isochromine, you have external double bond. So, first let us start with the synthesis of isochromine by Michael Piran and Michael Piran uh, used, a, uh, used an intramolecular 2 plus 2 photocycle addition uh, as the key step and this is the structure of uh, isochromine. He also used one more key reaction that is ring expansion under acidic condition. The first, uh, first key reaction is intramolecular 2 plus 2, plus two photocyclo addition and the second one is acid catalyzed ring expansion of 4 member ring to 5 member ring. So, according to um, Piran, isochromine can be easily obtained from this carbocation. So, if you can generate, this is an intermediate, okay, it is not a you know precursor, this is an intermediate. This carbocation, if you can generate, that should lead to isochromine. Okay. He thought this carbocation. Normally, what you would have thought this carbocation can be obtained from a tertiary alcohol or a double bond, exocyclic double bond. Okay. Simply, you know, from synthetic point of view, it is easy to think that this carbocation can be generated from the corresponding alcohol. But what he thought was that is a key thing that if you have like this system, then you know. Wagner Mervin type rearrangement can occur. This for this bond can migrate. If this can migrate, that will lead to this angular triquinane with a carbocation. Once you have this carbocation, obviously loss of proton will give the natural product. Then how do you generate this carbocation? Suppose if you have a ketone, then the ketone you can add either methyl grignard or you can do a Witte followed by protonation would should generate that tertiary carbocation, is not it? And how do you get this tricyclic compound? So, when you look at this 4 membered ring, immediately you should think about 2 plus 2 photocycloaddition. Again, there are two possibilities. One, you can break this way, 
okay. that is if you call this as breaking A bonds the other one you, you can break the vertical one so vertically. So that you can call it as breaking B bonds. So what he did was he broke the bonds B to form the four member ring. So that way this became the precursor. Now if you look at this, this can be easily made by simple acid catalyzed rearrangement again. So if you have this enone, okay, if you have this enone, then you add this grignard. So this grignard will add 1, 2 and then you will get an alcohol here. Then simple acid catalyzed hydrolysis will transposition the oxygen. Okay. So that way you can easily get this product in 2 steps from this. Okay. So this was the uh, you know simple retrosynthesis planned by Pirin and let us see how this synthesis worked out. He started with the commercially available 2 methyl cyclohexane 1, 3 dione. He started with 2 methyl cyclohexane 1, 3 dione. This on treatment with paratoluene sulfonic acid and methanol, it will give enol ether. So, as you know, when you have 1, 3 diketone, 1, 3 diketone also can exist in corresponding enol form. So, that is basically he methylated. Okay, the enol is methylated under acidic condition. Now, if you do LDA methylated treatment, you can introduce a methyl group here. Okay, that is the only place it can generate anion and then quench with the methyl ion. Okay, so, the fragment A is ready. Now, what you need is you need to make the bromide and then add that grignard to this enone. So, for that, we started from this gamma keto ester, then you do the Wittig. So, Wittig will go selectively to the ketone to get the double bond and reduction of ester with LAH, you get the corresponding alcohol. Now, convert that into bromide and then make grignard of that bromide and add to this enone. So, that will give you that tertiary alcohol. So, now simple acid treatment, first it will make this as a good leaving group, then this lone pair will come and the water molecule will go that will lead to the key precursor which is required for the intramolecular 2 plus 2 photocycle addition. Okay. So, now once you made this key precursor, what he did, he tried the key photochemical 2 plus 2 cycle addition reaction and this molecule also one should draw in such a way that one can easily explain the stereochemical outcome of the 2 plus 2 photocycle addition. So, you draw the cyclohexenone in such a way that put the methyl group in pseudo equatorial position. Okay. Now, when you bring this, when you bring this appended side chain for 2 plus 2 photocycle addition, this methyl group should point upwards. Okay. That way, if you keep this properly, then you will get this stereochemistry. Okay. If you look at this compound, this methyl group is in equatorial position and when this double bond comes, this methyl group goes to beta because that side only hydrogen is there, isn't it? That side only hydrogen is there. So, so methyl group will try to go to axial or beta. Okay. And during the 2 plus 2 cycle addition, this methyl group will go to alpha. And this molecule can be redrawn like this. Okay, I will leave it for a few seconds for you to visualize how I have drawn this structure into this. Is it easy to visualize? So, this 5 membered ring is alpha, this methyl group is beta, and this methyl group is alpha. Okay. So, the first key reaction you could do successfully that is the intramolecular 2 plus 2 photocycle addition worked very well to give that tricyclic compound. Now, what he needs to do is you have to add a methyl grignard or methyl lithium to get the tertiary alcohol followed by 
acid treatment should generate the carbocation, then the carbocation will undergo wagner weierian type rearrangement to give isochromine. So, he took this ketone and treated with methyl magnesium bromide and also methyl lithium. Unfortunately, these two did not give the corresponding tertiary alcohol. What happened? Methyl magnesium bromide and methyl lithium they both acted as base and they did not act as a nucleophile only enolate was formed in while treating with methyl magnesium bromide and methyl lithium. So, so alternatively it is very easy you can do levitic reaction. So, simple methyl vitic gave the precursor to wagner mirvin rearrangement. So, once you had the double bond treat with paratoluene sulfonic acid that gave straight away isochromine. Okay. Now, let us see the mechanism how this was rearranged to isochromine. First the protonation of this double bond took place to give the tertiary carbocation. Okay. Now, you have two bonds which can migrate one is bond A the other one is bond B. If bond A migrates that will lead to isochromine. If bond B migrates that will lead to some other natural product. Okay. So, assume that bond B migrates then you will get this skeleton. Okay. You can see this bond migrates here and that will lead to positive charge here. Okay. Now, if bond A migrates it is very simple that will straight away give the isochromic skeleton and simple loss of proton will give you isochromic. However, if you look at this intermediate okay, which is obtained by the migration of bond B. Okay, now, again this particular bond this particular bond if it migrates if it migrates what will you get is you will get the same intermediate. So, essentially it does not matter whether bond A migrates or bond B migrates what you get is the same intermediate which upon loss of proton will give the natural product which is isochrome. Okay. So, this is one of the real classical total synthesis and it is a single author paper by Michael Piring on the total synthesis of isochromine. So, in the total synthesis which was reported in 1979 um, he started with commercially available 2 methyl cyclohexane 1 3 diome and the key reactions involved are 2 plus 2 photocycle addition and wagner mirwin rearrangement. Overall uh, the total synthesis involved 6 longest linear steps, 6 longest linear steps and the yield was 42 percent which is quite quite high considering this uh, angular triquinates. The second synthesis which was reported by Fidder and here again uh, uh, the key reaction was ring enlargement and also wagner mirwin type rearrangement. This is the key reaction. So, if, if you look at this molecule you can see two four membered rings is not it? Two four membered rings spiro fused and one of the four membered rings is spiro fused with a five membered ring this upon treatment with acid okay this upon treatment with acid gives isochromine okay this is a very very interesting uh, sequence of reaction involving wagner mirwin type rearrangement okay let us see how he achieved this the retrosynthesis wise you know isochromine can be obtained in one step from this tertiary alcohol and this as you know if you have a ketone Okay, if you have a ketone you can introduce a one, met, one, one methyl group here by treating with LDA methyl iodide and if you add a methyl grignard to this ketone you get the corresponding tertiary alcohol. So, in two steps you can get the precursor for the acid catalyzed rearrangement. Now, how you get this cyclopentanol as you know if you have an epoxide if you have an epoxide epoxides are known to undergo ring enlargement or ring enlargement rearrangement. Okay. So, a 4 member ring with an XO epoxide can undergo rearrangement under acidic condition to give 
5 ohm battery. See for example, if you use a Lewis acid here, so what will happen? This can open up and this bond can migrate to get the corresponding 5 ohm bud keto. Okay. And epoxides can be easily made from the corresponding double bond and the double bond can be made from the ketone using Wittig reaction and finally the starting material for the whole scheme on total synthesis isocomine by FIDER is cyclobutane having an exocyclic double bond with two methyl groups. Okay. So, this is a starting material. Let us see how he successfully achieved the total synthesis of isocomine using this acid catalyzed ring rearrangement. First he started with the acetone. You can imagine for the synthesis of isocomine the starting material is acetone. Okay. Simple acetone which is a solvent. Now you do a Wittig reaction uh, with cyclobutane derived elide you get the first starting material. Okay. Next you have to do another 2 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction. This time you do 2 plus 2 cycloaddition with uh, dichloroketin. So, if you look at um, Pirang's total synthesis also there was a 2 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction. Here also 2 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction in Pirang's isocomine synthesis he has used intramolecular 2 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction. Here it is intermolecular 2 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction with dichloroketin as you know dichloroketin can be easily generated from either dichloroacetyl chloride by treating with uh, um, triethylamine or tri uh, trichloroacetyl chloride. If you take trichloroacetyl chloride and treat with zinc that also will give the dichloroketin. So, this will give you this pyrofused bicyclic system. So, now you have two four member ring, two four member rings spirofused. Next what you do not want is these two chlorine is not it? The chlorine was used to keep the ketene stable. Okay. So, once that served its purpose the chlorine should be removed. So, normally it is done by treating with zinc and acetic acid. So, you have the spirofused bicyclic ring. Next again do another Wittig with the same cyclobutane, uh, bromocyclobutane and uh, treat with triphenylphosphine and then butyl lithium you get the, the Wittig product. This looks very cute, this molecule looks very nice. You can see 3 4 membered rings, and 2 are spirofused and then 2 are interconnected with the double bond two are interconnected with the double bond. Then what you have to do is just to treat with MCPBA. Okay. Just MCPBA will give the corresponding epoxide. This epoxide as I said when you treat with Lewis acid, okay, when you treat with Lewis acid it undergoes, so first it will coordinate with BF3, okay, then it will open up and this bond migrates. So, that will give you the corresponding 5 ohm battery ring. If you look at this molecule, now there are 3 spirofused rings, 2 are 4 ohm battery rings and here if you see the spiro system as a 4 and 5 ohm battery fused system, very interesting system. Okay. Next you have to introduce a methyl group next to ketone, then add either methyl lithium or methyl grignard. So, LDA methyl iodide you can introduce a methyl group then followed by addition of methyl lithium will give the tertiary alcohol. So, this is the key precursor just before the acid catalyzed rearrangement. So, when he did carry out the acid catalyzed rearrangement he got isocomine as well as another product. So, how isocomine was formed? First as you know protonation will take place. When the water goes you get the tertiary carbocation. Once the tertiary car carbocation is formed then automatically one of the bonds of the spirofused 4 member ring should migrate and this migration of this bond will give you another 5 member ring. So, now what happens? Earlier 
this 5 membered ring and this 4 membered ring are spiro fused. Now after this they are linearly fused. So that leads to another carbocation that also can trigger the migration of the bond from 4 membered ring. As you know 4 membered rings are not that stable. So that is a key thing which trigger the migration of uh, bonds. Once that happens now you can see what you got is angular triquinane system, angular triquinane system but still it is not leading to isocobin. You are getting an angular triquinane structure but it is not the isocobin. So once you have a tertiary carbocation here you have a quaternary center adjacent position. From the quaternary center one of the methyl groups can migrate. So when, when one of the methyl group migrates what you get is another tertiary carbocation ok. And if it loses a proton, if it just loses a proton there are two possibilities that it can lead to exocyclic double bond or endocyclic double bond. Of course, since it is treated with acid then possibility of getting exocyclic double bond is high. So that is how he got isocobin as the major product ok. So this is a very very interesting total synthesis starting with uh, you know uh, acetone and then do Wittig reaction with bromocyclobutane derived elide and you get spirofused 3 spirofused ring and then simple acid catalyst rearrangement gives you the natural product. Wagner Mirwin rearrangement and 2 plus 2 cycloaddition as key reactions. So in summary, so this uh, total synthesis was reported um, about 10 years after Michael Perenck's uh, total synthesis of isocomine and it started with acetone and uh, the key reactions involved in this are 2 plus 2 cycloaddition and acid catalyzed wagner mirwin type rearrangement. Overall this whole synthesis took 9 linear steps and overall yield was about 6.6 percent ok. So I will stop here and then I will continue our discussion on total synthesis of uh, various triquinanes in the next uh, maybe 7 to 8 lectures because there are many total synthesis of uh, uh, triquinanes and each synthesis use at least uh, two key reactions some of them are completely different than the other total synthesis. So this way when we talk about total synthesis of various triquinanes we will learn lot of new chemistry ok. So thank you. <laughs>